Hello. Well, if you follow my channel, you know already that I do audio and video transfers for many customers. And in this particular case, um, I've got a request to run the tape that is stuck in this camcorder. Now, it might be that uh, it's simply a case if they don't have a battery, the customer doesn't have a battery and power supply for this, uh, or it might be that it's actually stuck in there. So uh, first thing I'll do is apply the correct voltage to the battery terminals here to see if I can get the camcorder to reject the tape itself. In the majority of cases, this is all I need to do. So the terminals are marked minus and plus there, and referring to the bottom, it says six volts DC. I'll set up this power supply. I'm using this side. I'll set it to six volts, give or take, and there's a current limit on it, and I'll set it fairly high. I think that's gonna be in the sort of area of about an amp because uh, they do take quite a lot of current. Right, let's uh, hook that up to the camcorder. Polarity is everything, of course. I'm trying not to damage the camcorder. I don't think it'll ever be used again, but it's still useful to do as little damage as possible. This, the, dis the display seems to be flickering on and off. Actually, I'm seeing the uh, power supply tripping out, so I'm gonna raise the current limit on it. Right, okay, so I've set that high, and now it's sitting there steadily. And the display is on properly. In fact, the camcorder sounds like it's working properly. So, uh, if I flick it to player, it'll probably play the tape. I don't quite know where the control buttons are. I don't know. But I can see patterning on the screen, which means that something's not well. You may not be able to see that, but the, uh, there's a slight striping of the image. So I think we'll go straight ahead to try to eject the tape, and I think that's going to work. It didn't work. Switch it off position. Nothing. That's a little disappointing, isn't it? Keep persevering with the switch. Sometimes just a bit of perseverance can help with a machine that's not been used for a long time. I'm going to keep it powered up and keep trying a few times before we uh, resort to uh, further measures such as uh, stripping the machine down. Because sometimes if the capacitors get a chance to reform, it might come back to life just enough to eject the tape. Ah, there's the buttons, the controls. I just heard it come into life as I opened that. Again, I'm going to just keep trying. I'm going to try a little bit more voltage and power cycle it a few times. So I'm running on trying 6.7 volts now, just a little bit more. Occasionally the motor starts up, one of the motors drum motor I suspect. Then it shuts down again. We're going to have to strip it down. Okay, so it uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to uh, get it to eject in the normal way, so we're going to have to uh, take it to pieces and do as little dismantling as possible I think it's fair to assume at this point that the camcorder is a write-off, so uh, if I do damage it, then uh, so be it. But I'll try not to. Looking at the mechanism, I see it's fully laced at the moment, and up against the leader tape. Yes, the head drum is spinning occasionally, but that's all. Right, let's take some cabinet work off it. The trouble with most camcorders is you end up having to do a lot of dismantling to gain any access at all. Okay, so I have some access to the deck now, and this motor here, I believe, is the one that will drive the deck, so we might be able to use that to uh, unlace the mechanism. Maybe. So there's a four terminal connector there to the motor 
Let me have a closer look, see if we can work out why. It looks like uh, it's got sense wires going to the motor. Okay, so I need to apply voltage to this motor. Um, I don't know what voltage. Um, I'm going to guess somewhere in the 5 volt area. Give that a whirl. And I'm also going to have to guess at the polarity, of course, because one way will drive it further laced and the other unlaced. So we're going to be guessing to which direction to drive it. I think that's the wrong way. So if I operate it now, I'm hoping it will unlace. Of course, it won't take the tape back into the cassette, but at least it will unlace it. and eject all in one move so okay we've got some tape slack at the very end there but that's easy enough to solve so we'll just take the tape out carefully trying to snag it on as few components as possible okay that's really not too badly damaged at all. Good. So that tape can now be run for the customer. Now if I uh, reconnect power to the reconnect the power the motor, it might be that if I power up the machine it'll actually lace it'll close. It may not. I don't think it will actually, but we'll give it a whirl. No. So what I'll do is, just to make it tidy, I will uh, disconnect this motor again and see if we can get it to uh, close. Okay. So this camcorder is not going to work, but at least it's uh, nicely reassembled, you know, nicely put back together. Now I can refit the cabinet and give it cam give it back to the customer in a, in a reasonable condition. Well, that was quite a quick video, wasn't it? So we successfully got the tape out of an old Sony Video 8 camcorder without really damaging the tape or camcorder at all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now. <laughs>